Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Quietplease.org presents Quiet Please, which is written by and features Paul Mirror. Quiet Please for tonight is called Transit. Hey, buddy, spare some change? Thanks. Very generous. You have a good soul and an open mind. I'll tell you what. I can do something for you in exchange. There's something really important I know that only I know. It'd change your world. And if you've got time, I'll tell you. You good? Great. Let me sit down. It's so hard to find someone who will just sit still and let me finish what I have to say without interrupting. Well, this all started on Tuesday. My friend Jumbo invited me over to the Tenderloin to play some chess at Boudicca Park. He played the Roy Lopez opening, but I was ready for it. We were pretty evenly matched and the game went on for hours, but I prevailed in the end. By that time it was getting dark and I was getting sleepy. Sleep is usually a challenge for someone like me, but I knew the restrooms in that park weren't patrolled often. So I went in, curled up using my coat as a pillow, and drifted off to sleep feeling pretty confident I'd be able to catch a few hours before anyone would kick me out. But just moments after I fell asleep, I woke to the familiar, painful feeling of someone's shoe poking me in the ribs. Who the hell are you? It's an alien. You stay out of this, Squish. I have as much right to alien as you. Well, you deaf? Sorry, sir. I'm Clark Q. Higginbottom. I must have accidentally fallen asleep. So sorry, it's these medications. I better be going home now. Wait. What the hell? This isn't the restroom I fell asleep in. What is this? Who are you people? This is transit. We're in transit. We're the people of transit. It's always so simple for you, Flex. Leave the alien to us. I'm Bristleton Cooler, but you can call me Sir. The annoying one is Squish, and the simple one is Flex Median. What's your purpose here, Higginbottom? Purpose? <laughs> All I know is I fell asleep and then you started kicking me in the ribs. Didn't you bring me here? Why does Squish call me an alien? You're not from transit, ergo, you're an alien. What's transit? What isn't transit? The rest of the world? Earth? Vast oceans? Mountains? Trees? Sky? Parks, public restrooms, that stuff. Never heard of any of that. Those are just nonsense words. But I have theories. I think there is something beyond transit. Probably a soft, gaseous purple fog on all sides. It's my belief that this fog is thick enough to hold us locked and has currents that carry us toward the destination. The destination? Are you taking me somewhere? <sighs> Ignore Squish. Her theories are a load of inconsequential rubbish. There's nothing beyond transit, nothing beyond what you can see right here. Just because you're too simple to conceptualize something doesn't mean it isn't real. 
What is our destination? Nobody knows the destination. It just stands to reason that we must come from somewhere, and we're in transit. So there must be a destination. Action stations, action stations, action stations! Working on it already. Adjust the mixture, try more fluoride, or grease the track. Squish, did you grease the track this morning like I ordered? Of course I didn't. This whole contraption is pointless. I don't play your stupid games to beat your ego, Bristleton. Games? You fool! This could be the end for us all. Got it! <coughs> May I ask what that was all about? As if you don't know. Why weren't you helping? You're as bad as Squish. I really don't have any idea what's going on here. It's the Rubikoff machine. We have to maintain the mixture. Grease the track, polish the switches, and feed it input every hour. That's what we're here for. This Robocop machine... What exactly is it for? What do you mean? I just explained how it works. It doesn't do anything. It's absurd. But these fools spend their whole lives tending to it anyway. Squish, if you see it's absurd, why don't you leave? It's not like they have you chained up. What's keeping you here? I mean, just walk out the door and see what's going on outside. What door? The one right over there. I don't see a door. I'll show you. This door. I don't know what you're talking about. Here, I'll open it. Get away from there, Higginbottom. You might break something. Hey, this looks like Market Street. Come on. You've damaged the wall. Put that piece back immediately. Squish, you coming? I don't know what you're talking about. Flex? This has nothing to do with me. I shrugged back at them and stepped out, finding myself in the middle of traffic at Market 5th. Transit was gone. I didn't tell anybody about transit. They'd only have thought I was crazy, like you do right now. I see that look on your face. I see that look a lot. But keep listening. You can make up your mind when I'm done. The next morning, I went for a stroll down Mission towards the bay. There in the heart of the city, beneath the shadows of the skyscrapers, it was dark. I looked up at the sky to make sure it was still there. My gaze slid down the edge of the Millennium Tower, over hundreds of windows and seconds. Inside each window, people were living out their lives in a small share of a metal box. And they were supposedly the lucky ones, the city's most successful, slaving away their whole lives to earn and keep their place. I was overcome with a wave of pity for them. A million little rats chasing cheese through a maze. How little they understood. By the time I reached the Embarcadero, I was feeling pretty distracted. I never even saw the bicycle that hit me, set my head crashing into concrete at just the wrong angle. I was out like a light. The next thing I felt was a tap on my shoulder, followed by a soft voice in my ear. Listen carefully, Higginbottom. After you disappeared, we had another visitor from wherever it is you come from. Gloria Throckmorton is her name, and I don't want her to overhear us. She is diabolical. I'm going to need your help to save Transit from her all. I know I can count on you. I see you're awake now, Clark. Let's get one thing straight. You can leave any time, but while you're here, you'll do exactly what I say. This is my place now, and I won't have anyone messing it up. Okay, all the same to me. But it's not the same, she's changed the mixtures. Back to work, Bristleton. Help Flex with the input. Clock, I like this place. I plan on staying. 
they need a strong leader. Don't screw with me, and your visit can be pleasant. But cross me, and I'll have you in chains too. She looked over my shoulder, and I followed her gaze behind me to the wall. Her squish was medical. She's learning the importance of hard work and obedience. You can have another hour to recover from your head injury. But beyond that, you'll have to earn your keep with work. I watched them work for a few minutes. Flex seemed unperturbed as ever, simply going through the motions. Bristleton, for all the seditiousness, was working at a frenzied pace. Gloria sat watching them, occasionally barking new orders. Squish, are you okay? Pain is but an illusion like the world. Chains can never truly bind a free spirit. Would you like me to help you escape? To do what? Overthrow Gloria? I don't want power. All leaders are despotic, each worse than the one before. The only noble action is to refuse to lead, and refuse to fall. What about leaving transit with me? Ah, your so-called door. Don't talk nonsense. We can't breathe the purple fog. Leave me alone. Lex, what do you think of this leadership change? Who cares? My job is the same. Just making my way in life makes no difference who gives the orders. Do you care what the orders mean? Nope. Now get out of my way. There didn't seem to be any purpose to my stay. I made my way to the door, opened it, and saw Stow Lake in front of me. I looked back at the others, but they were all ignoring me, absorbed in their own worlds. I stepped out into Golden Gate Park. It was dusk and my head was throbbing, so I slept on this very bench. What I saw when I awoke is what I want to tell you about, and to show you. I want you to turn around now, very slowly. Try not to make any assumptions about what you're seeing. Don't see what you expect. Don't reject what can't be. Just see, unfiltered. You see it now? Yes, I can tell you do. Go ahead, reach out and touch it. It's a real door. No, I don't know where it goes. I'm afraid to open it. Are you? The title of tonight's Quiet Please story was Transit. It was written by Paul Narum, and the man who spoke to you, Kirk Q. Higginbottom, was Paul Narum. And Flex Median was played by Susan Leon Riddle. Bristleton Cooler was Splendid Bob. Sheska portrayed Gloria Throckmorton. Some girl on the internet portrayed Squish. Now, for a word about next week, it goes to Phyllis Cooper. Next week, the untold story of the rehearsal for the Half the Bed of John J. Catherine. It's called Final Rehearsal. And so until next week at the same time, I am proudly yours, Ernest Chappell.